now what i was saying look i appreciate this i appreciate your time man and let's change the world man you ready yes sir yes sir all right my man So what's going on, y'all? Welcome to Half Hour Power with your brother. Opinion. <laughs> <laughs> My man, what's going on, brother? Uh, not too much, man. Not too much. God is good. How you doing? I mean, so I want to talk about evangelism today. And like when it comes to evangelism, what's the first thing that comes to your mind when it comes to evangelism? Uh, wow. I think the, the first thing that comes to my mind is the uh, the Great Commission given by Jesus to his disciples and the church at large yes <laughs> yeah oh uh, yeah like mm -hmm. so tell me a little bit about you man so when it comes to Jer jesus i mean were you raised in church like when it comes to evangelism like how did you learn how to evangelize was it just part of your makeup or you actually you know just you know you was taught you had some training uh well i I uh, was brought up in church, uh, raised raised up in the church from the earliest of my years of, you know, just remembering anything, just remembering life. I've been in church all my life. And oh, yeah? So, yes, lifer, sir. Huh? <laughs> yes, yeah. sir. Yeah, you know, I'm so you get lifer. that. You're not a lifer? Nah, I'm not a lifer. <laughs> <laughs> all right. You know, so you get that training um, in Sunday school, you know, Bible study, church. Um, you know, your particular church teaches you how to to um to witness or evangelize you know my father being a pastor he's taught us he's taught me how to evangelize but for me uh, i believe evangelism is a work in progress which means that um there's no i think there's one message that we bring but i don't think there's any one method to that message of uh, each culture you know there's different cultures with different world views uh, and just knowing how to, you know, to go in and out of those worldviews and to present the gospel to people of different nationalities and different worldviews, you know, it takes, uh, uh, um, you know, it takes some adjusting. Right. right. Well, one thing that we share, there's a commonality between me and you is that we worship Jesus. He's our Lord. He's our Savior. And one thing when it comes to evangelism with him he didn't it didn't matter where he went or who he encountered you were going to get that smoke jesus gave you all the smoke i mean i'm talking i mean the guy traveled whether it was bethany bethsaida capernaum another place called janissaretta janet i don't even know how to say it i you know what i mean so he traveled he spoke to you know pharisees uh, a synagogue ruler uh, adulterous woman adulterous woman uh a lame man like so it don't matter where he went or who he encountered he shared the gospel and then i learned that evangelism is you know just a christian role of sharing the gospel through preaching or letting some people you know see how you live in the gospel you know paul taught us also like if i want to say ephesians chapter four people like yourself there's pastors prophets apostles teachers and what we're talking about evangelists mm -hmm. and what i'm learning about evangelists is that evangelists gives the gospel just how gas stations give gas evangelists mm -hmm. gives the gospel but my question to you is from your perspective you know as best as you can how well you can articulate what is the gospel mm. the gospel is um it's the good news it's the good news that um, of that Jesus died according right. to the scriptures, that he was buried and resurrected according to the scriptures, um, and it has ramifications of 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 the good news of what has happened, the good news of what will happen, and then in the interim between what will happen and what has happened, which is how we live and the message that we share nice so that's what i believe that the gospel is that it's, it's 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 good news it's not it's not good advice it's not offering somebody advice um 
is offering someone news. You know, it's announcing good, good news. Uh, I think a good example of it is where the word actually comes from. Um, you know, in uh, the, the Jews living in the first century uh, world that they lived in, Jesus, um, when a new Caesar would come into place, uh, someone would come in and they would announce what was called the gospel. They would announce good news. And right. that is, there's a new Caesar, there's a new king. And when you really think about it, that's what the disciples did all throughout the book of Acts is they went around announcing everywhere they went that there's a new king and his name is Jesus Christ. It's funny. I um, I was listening to some guys saying, I think someone, they named their church Acts 28 because the book of Acts haven't ended. <laughs> <laughs> nice, you, know, nice. you know, we just was like, this is called Acts 28. Mm -hmm. But when you minister the good news, what are you expecting people to hear? Um, wow. I'm expecting people to hear, um, and this may sound strange, but I'm expecting people to hear things that they've never heard before. Um, which is the of, God. right. Well, <laughs> which, well, you know, to be honest, most people have heard of Jesus, of Jesus. Most people have yeah, heard yeah. that Jesus died for their sins. Um, and most people have heard, you know, that he resurrected. But right. what I don't, I don't. What I think that people don't get is that the Apostle Paul and even Jesus himself, uh, when he came um, after his resurrection and he went into the room with his disciples, he right. said it first right. to his disciples, and then Paul echoed it: is that the death, the burial, and resurrection of Jesus is according to the Scriptures. And at the time, there was no New Testament Bible, so they were talking about the Old Testament Bible. And just understanding the world view uh, is that one of the things that I think we leave out. You know, we preach against sin. You know, we preach that the gospel can save you from your sins. We preach about eternal life. You know, you believe in Jesus, you'll have eternal life. But I think one of the things that we leave out, an elemental uh, foundation of the gospel, is the, is the reclamation or the reclaiming of the nations. You know, Jesus has come back to reclaim the nations. You know, re reclaim the nations from those gods that they've been worshiping. You know, mm. from those deities that they've been bowing down to. And that's why he announces that he's a new king. He, he's the new king. You know, he's come to take over people's territory. You right. Know? So, yeah, he's definitely a disruptor. He's, yeah, sure. <laughs> he's definitely a disruptor. I believe he was radical. He was bold. He was confident. And he was, yeah, he was unique, peculiar. He was the Godhead. You yes, know, sir. and it was interesting with me, whatever I've experienced in my Christian tenure is something I call uncomfortable evangelism. And I don't feel comfortable at times giving bad news. I, You know what I mean? But sometimes you're led to say and do things that, you know, you just got to do what you got to do. You either obey God or obey, you know, it's, it's no gray area. Mm -hmm. And the first thing that come to mind is in Acts chapter five with St. Peter with Ananias and Sapphira. Now, you know the story. I know the story. And Peter had to deliver some bad news <laughs> to them because how they, were, they were just operating inappropriately. And I think, correct me if I'm wrong, I think Sapphira, she didn't know her husband transitioned. And when Peter came to her, she said the same message as her husband. And I think he was like, <laughs> defeat you know, Satan's goons is at your door. Like, she probably didn't even know, you know, but my question to you have you ever experienced uncomfortable evangelism where you had to deliver a hard message? Uh, yes. Yes. Um, you mind expounding on it or is it too personal? Because for me, I, I just, you know what I mean? Well, um, that's part of it too. A lot of people think, oh, it's just hunky dory. Sometimes you got to give people the real. You do. You do. You, you, you definitely do. And I think one of those things is that, um, understanding that the apostle paul said to some people is going to be foolishness and to others it's going to be a stumbling block so oh, wow. you know but to, but to those who believe you know it's, it's it's the power of god you know of 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 christ and his wisdom so uh i think knowing that going into it you know it just it should it should prepare us to be able to understand that some people are going to reject it some people are going to be confrontational um some people may seem friendly to it, and then once you really get into it and you share it and uh, you start stepping on their toes, if you will, you know, um, then people become aggressive towards you. Um, and sometimes you don't know that until you get into it, and other times you do know it. You know, 
sometimes you do know, like, like no, you know. I'm thinking, of a, I'm thinking of an account where you actually knew this was going to be hard and you still cashed in, you still went in. You know what I mean? Yes. Yeah, like you yeah. feel like man. Like, all right, let, let's give an example. Um, are you the firstborn or I, you no, know? I'm second born. So so look, I met your dad, lovely man. I mean, a guy. He always treated me with open arms, shook my hand. I ate his food. <laughs> Been at his house more than a few times. Yes. You, he's a bishop. You're his son. You're a man of faith. You're a man of the cloth. Have you ever had that? have to have a conversation with your dad and father son like dad i'm just keeping it real bop 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 like a hard message <laughs> yes yeah you know what yes. i mean like it's yes. just yes. like you know when it comes to family it could be real hard a stranger mm -hmm. whatever but i gotta tell my dad like he's wrong like i don't know you know right right yes 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 i think we yes we did, we've had you know those conversations um uh, I think infrequently, you know, more than frequently, but we've had we've had had those conversations. Um, and in terms of of having those conversations with people, you know, that I had to share the gospel with, um, it seems as as when I've tried to witness to those people that I knew it was going to be hard, I knew it was going to be difficult, uh, and I approached those people. For the most part, it seems like they they try to get out of it. Oh yeah. <laughs> yes. 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 Um, <laughs> I mean, a message is a message. Ain't nothing to get out of. I right. mean, you know. Yeah, I mean, when I say they try to get out of, it, is that uh, they try to avoid having that conversation. You know, like I've reached out to uh, several uh, members. I've reached out to members of my family who are, um, you know, um, who believe in other religions and other gods, and I've reached out to them and just asked them if they want to get together and just chop up the Bible. You know, just just sit down and and discuss the scriptures and and what they believe in. And they've avoided me, you know. And um, Man, you know, I mean, I, I guess that's, it's just at times you think some people paint Christianity where it's just no pushback, like everything's supposed to just be smooth, and right. it don't work like that. Another form of uncomfortable evangelism that I have experienced is um, ministering to people who I don't care to be around. And when I think about the scriptures, I think it's in Acts chapter nine, the same name. And I don't believe it's not the same guy, but a guy named Ananias was led by the Holy Spirit to baptize Paul. Mm -hmm. and at that time, I, I assume Paul was blind and Ananias was like, Lord, you somebody else. He's like, no, I'm, I'm asking you. And Ananias knew about that dude, Paul, track record. And he ain't, <laughs> he ain't one of the parts of it. Right. And, you know, my question to you is, have you ever experienced uncomfortable evangelism? Where you were led to minister to someone who you didn't really care about, like you yeah. just, oh my gosh, man. Yes, yes, Why yes. Why I gotta talk to him? Why I gotta talk to her? Like, you know what yeah. I mean? Yes, I, yes, yes. I, 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 I had I, I, that experience. I don't know if it was bad as Ananias with uh, Paul, but <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, no, it, it was. A, I think for me, it was. It was. It was. I mean, I don't want to use the word that, you know, mine was worse than his, but for Ananias, at least Paul had already gone through a conversion experience. For me, you know, it was, uh, you know, I felt the Lord leading me to He didn't know. Right, 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 right. Yeah, he, he had no knowledge of that. Uh, and, and But for me, it's like people who, like Ananias, I thought, you know, well, these people have no, you know, like I've seen them chop up Christians. I've seen them in the barbershop, you know, hanging Christians out to dry. You know what oh, I'm saying? Oh. <laughs> you know, and I'm just like, you know. And I just felt the Lord saying, go and talk to him, you know, go, uh, and, and, you know. So, I mean, so, so, so with, with things like that, I think like what I've tried to do is I've tried not to witness to them or share with them in a setting where there's an audience because most people uh, see an audience and they either have two, um, two reactions. Either they want to impress the audience. So they're going to do no listening, but a lot of right, talking right. and arguing. Or they're intimidated by an audience, and they don't, and so they want to avoid certain things, but they don't want to seem to get, you know, beat down, if you will. So, you know, I like to build relationships with people, you know, friendships, you know, and 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 try to um, establish, you know, once those relationships are established, then open up that dialogue of witnessing the people, you know, so they know that I'm just not out to attack them, but to attack their faith, but tell them. Look, there's good news. Like, however you believe, I got better news than that. <laughs> right, you know? right, right. They got to believe that, though. Yeah, yeah.
They, they, they got to believe that, though, because you when you evangelize in, in public and someone already believe and we can we can use um, what is it called? Catholicism. Mm -hmm. You know, if somebody already believes something and you're led to minister to them and they already have a belief, ah, it's going to be some pushback. Oh, That's yeah. why it's uncomfortable evangelism. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. know, uh, um, so there's a count. It, there's an account in the Gospels where Jesus encountered a guy that was filled with many spirits. And I believe his name was Legion and Jesus didn't back down. He approached him, he healed him. And the guy was like, Hey, listen, you know, let me follow you. And I, I let me follow you. But Jesus said, I, I have it up here. It says, Jesus said, no, go home to your family and tell them everything the Lord has done for you and how merciful he has been. You know, and my question to you, is how important is it to share our testimony while evangelizing? Because this guy, he wanted to follow Jesus and he was like, no, no, you don't follow me. You go and tell tell the people because everybody know who he was. You know, he was he was filled with many spirits. And I laughed because I was watching Creflo Dollar. And in that case, Jesus cast him into pigs. I think Legion was like cast us into the swan or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then I heard Creflo say, you should never eat nothing Jesus cast demons into. Man, I eat pork ribs all the time, brother. <laughs> Get out of here, Cruffalo, with all that. <laughs> I, I'm a pork eater too, bro. Ain't no yeah, you know I, mean? I eat pork all the time. Get out of here, Cruffalo. <laughs> but um, how important is it to share our testimony while evangelizing? Because we see what happened to Legion. Yes, uh, I, I definitely think it's important to share um, our personal testimony. Um, and you know what's funny with that is that you don't get that a lot in the book of Acts. When, when, oh, when you see the miracles, signs, and wonders. Yes, yes. You know, you don't get a lot of people sharing their personal uh, testimonies with people. But I do think that that has relevance. And the Apostle Paul does it sporadically uh, at least three times throughout the book of Acts. Um, uh, 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 and Jesus tells other people to share their stories. And we have accounts and testimonies of people's stories. So I, I do think that, that, um, you know, those personal testimonies can, you know, uh, help to evangelize, to bring people to Christ. Now, here's what I always teach in my congregation is do not make your only means of evangelizing sharing your testimony, your personal testimony, because your personal testimony is not going to resonate with everybody. Yeah, that's true. So this is why I think one stream of evangelizing uh, is not going to cover all points, you right. know, and, and, and I think what's and this is a little off the topic, but I think that for this, that what makes Jesus tell this man who had a, 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 a large amount of demons in him called the Legion, what made Jesus tell this man to go back and share this with the people of his family is that if you notice, this is the only time that a demon refers to Jesus as son of the most high God. Wow. Whereas every other time the demons refer to Jesus as Jesus as Jesus of Nazareth. Now, this is the only time that Jesus casts out a demon in a Gentile territory. So you have a Gentile territory and a demon referring to Jesus as son of the most high God. And then you have Jesus telling this man, don't follow me, but go back and tell your family. So I think that there's a lot in that context that that would that would give a uh, reason to why Jesus tells this man to go back and tell his family. He's in a Gentile territory and the demon refers to him as Jesus, son of the most high God. There's a lot in that that has to be unpacked, but that's a whole nother show. No, no, no. I think in the book of Acts chapter nine, I want to say well, the 14 and 15, uh, actually that Ananias story, God specifically told him he is to preach to the Gentiles. And at that time, there was nobody preaching to the Gentiles because I think in John chapter four, I think Jesus says salvation is of the Jews. So at that point, what you're talking about, it was no gospel in that area. So Jesus, yo, you know, whatever your name is, Legion. I don't know what his real name. I don't know if the other gospel shared it. Yeah, but no, they don't. No, uh, you go. Home. But let me ask you something um, about testimonies. When Christians refrain 
from sharing their testimony with others. Is that like a slap in the face to God though? Because, and the only reason why I ask that, because like you mentioned, sharing your testimony is great. It's a way to influence people about telling people what you've been through and how the Lord delivered you. But if I'm honest with you, bro, a lot of people not, they don't have the courage to talk about the adultery, talk about the pornography, talk about the abuse, drug abuse, or why they were incarcerated. You know, a lot of times people don't really want to, they forget they passed. I ain't going to say they forget it, but they're not, a lot of people not quick to come open and share what they've been through and how they overcame. So my question to you is when Christians refrain from sharing their testimony, is that like a slap to God? Um, it all depends why they refrain. If, if they refrain because, um, you know, they want to think themselves more than they ought to, uh, you know, think more of themselves than they ought to, or if they're ashamed or afraid, then yes, um, um, I think that is, I'm not, I, I don't know if I would say a slap in the face of God, but I, I do think that it's, you know, that it's not, it's, that's not a good reason why you don't want to share your, you know, your testimony. Um, but there again, I go back to uh, every situation doesn't call for it. Like for instance, um, I met a man that, um, you know, he's Indian, he's from India and um his son was wearing a charm around his neck and I asked him, well, what's that charm around your son's neck? Now I had already attended. I went to the park that, that day to share the gospel. And I, I live in an area where the largest, uh, it has the most, uh, the largest Indian population outside of oh, India. Yeah. What, so, do Indians, what do Indians worship? Who do they worship? Indians have, uh, well, if they're Hindu, they have the largest pantheon. There's over a million gods in their pantheon. So Hindu. yes. Uh, so his son had a charm around his neck. And so I said, what's the charm around your son's neck? And he said, oh, that's of our God. And he named this guy. And he said, it's a monkey God. And he said, it's, it's our territorial God. He said, it's not our high God, but it's our territorial God. He said, so of course we pay respect and allegiance to our high God, but we also have to pay respect and allegiance to our territorial God over the land, the part of the country in which we live. Now, sharing my personal testimony with him right. just wouldn't have done anything to the conversation because I'm not trying to win him over from, I'm, like, my thing is not trying to get him to stop sinning. My thing is trying to get him to, 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 to stop pledging allegiance to the gods that he served and pledge allegiance to the Most High God and his son, the Messiah, Jesus. So my personal testimony about how the Lord delivered me from, you know, drugs or how the Lord delivered me from uh, X, Y, Z or how the Lord delivered me from that, that my personal testimony is not going to have a bearing on, on that on that relationship, on, on me trying to evangelize to that individual. That's nah, the whole not, thing. Not, not, the only way it will really work is if you're doing life with him, you're getting to know him and y'all build a relationship and he begin to let you in on the dark skeletons he has in his closet. And if mm -hmm. some of the skeletons are something you can relate with, eventually what you can say is, oh, I had that same thing. Let me tell you what the Lord has done for me. But other than that, if you don't get, if you don't get behind a curtain with him and do life with him, yeah, you're right. It, it, you know. Yep, yep. And, and, then, and then another thing is that when you try to, align your testimony to somebody that you're witnessing to. The thing is, is that um, you're trying to find their sins, sins in their lives that match past sins in your life. If, I, if, if I'm dealing with someone and I, and I say, well, the Lord delivered me from, from smoking weed, for instance, and they say, yeah, well, I never smoked weed. Oh, well, the Lord delivered me from drinking alcohol. Well, yeah, I, I've never took a sip of alcohol. Well, the Lord delivered me from... Um, you know, from fornication. Well, you know, I, 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 I waited until I was. So now I'm out of sins. So now my personal testimony, I got nothing for this guy because every sin that I had, he never had a problem with it. Right. So right. so that's why I, that, that's why I don't believe that there's a great that there's no great push. If you look at it, there's no uh, mandate uh, in scripture uh, to share your personal testimony. No, you know? not, not. So, it, it, so it, it, it's, it's definitely a tactic, but it's not the end all to be all to evangelize it. From your heart, just where you at as a pastor, a man of faith, husband, son, 
like from your heart, what is evangelism from your heart? Wow. Um, announcing to someone that there's a new king, a new king over the earth. And your former life, whatever it may be, because it's, it's, it's a different approach to, to a different person of a different ethnicity, a different nationality, a different worldview, different approach. But whatever in your life that has been your worldview, I have better news. There's a new king. I like that. And his name is Jesus. And he's died for your sins. And he's been resurrected, guaranteeing you eternal life. And all you have to do is pledge your allegiance to him. He's the most high God. And then you get into what he's done for you and what he will do for you. You know, because that's the, the beauty of the gospel is that what he has done, what he will do. And then that interim in between on how we ought to live. You know, because there's a promise. He's promised us a new life. He's promised us a new heaven and a new earth. Right. No more tears, no more sorrow, no more death. You know, no more sickness, no more pain. You know, we'll never have to die again. Resurrected to a new life. A new life. Yeah. Well, let's do let's do a role play because I like what I like what Peter said in First Peter. I'm gonna read it. He said, "You know, you must worship Christ as Lord of your life. And if someone asks about your hope as a believer, always be ready to explain it. Let's do a role play. Let's just say I'm an unbeliever." Mm -hmm. And you're in a local diner. And as I walk past your, your table, you eating eggs, bacon, whatever you got, got your orange juice. And I walk past and I hear you praying and you're just saying grace. Mm -hmm. And I decide to say, you know what, man? I mean, why? I mean, listen, um, I heard you saying grace. Like, why are you saying grace? Like, like, what are you what are you doing? You know, why are you saying grace? Like how being as though you have faith. You believe in a resurrection. You believe in eternal life. Everything that which you just stated, a guy who don't know anything from anything. And I hear a guy saying grace before he eat. Like, like, talk to me about your guy. Like, what, what would you, how would you just download into me of your experiences, you know? Yes, yes. That's an interesting question. And I'm going to lead into that question by saying this. Then I'm going to attempt to try to address the question. But uh, I was sharing with my sister, Diana, who, you know, I was sharing with her before, um, is that, hey, Diana. <laughs> is that uh, there is no uh, there is no recipe okay. on, on sharing your faith. You know, uh, um, someone had asked Professor, um, Professor N.T. Wright, they said, if you're sitting on a bus, with somebody or on an airplane and you only have three minutes to give them the gospel. Can you, how do you package that gospel in, in three minutes and give it to them? And he was oh, like, God. you know, like there is no recipe for a three minute gospel. There's no recipe for a package. Uh, each conversation is going to be different because if, if, while I'm talking to that person, he or she may have questions and each question will be different from each person. And it's going to lead me down a different road. Especially, so, especially if you're real hungry and you don't want your eggs to get cold. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Talk to me about grace. Come back and say yeah. So with that being said, for me, um, I would focus on Jesus Christ. Okay. I would focus on the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ and why I pledge my allegiance to him. I would, I would focus on what he's done how he died for me, how he was buried for me, how he was resurrected for me. Right. I would focus on what he will do for me, the great promises that we have. Right. And then I would right. focus on the reason why I choose to live my life the way I do, living in the interim between what he has done and what he will do. Right. And I would just try to hone into that as much as possible. And then you get back to your breakfast. <laughs> If need be, if need be, hopefully the conversation would just keep going and he or she would have other questions and right. we could pick up from there and, and things of that nature. There's another uh, passage that I hear a lot of ministers use in regards to evangelism. And I just want to see if you have experienced this, you know, as in First Corinthians 3. 
He said, I planted Apollo's water, but God gave the growth. So neither he who plants nor he who water is anything, but only God who gives the growth. And you, you hear the term, one, got one plant, one water, God gets the increase, different, different translations. Can you recall a time in your life, and this is the last question, of you being one who planted, whether you sowed a seed, somebody else water, and then God, you know, they eventually got born again? Or have you been in a position where you was the water, one who watered, and then God got the increase, you led them to Christ? You know, I'm just, have you ever experienced being one who plant and one who water? I, I have experienced both. Um, oh. be- being the planter, I have a friend of mine uh, named uh, Gerard Reynolds. Uh, okay. He went to high school with me and my brother, um, and we kind of introduced him to Jesus. You know, he came to church with us um, as, as teenagers in high school. He, you know, he came to our church, and we introduced him to Jesus. Uh, we showed him as much as Christ as we possibly could. Right. Um, and he didn't become a believer, um, a born again believer. Um, but he went away. You know, he he uh, qualified for the Olympics. He was a great athlete, qualified for the Olympics. He actually got hurt, so he wasn't able to compete, or he would have smashed records in the Olympics. Um, oh, he was nice. like that, huh? yeah, yeah, he was good. And then he moved down to Florida. And some years after that, about 10 years after that, 20 years after that, I got a call from him. We caught up on Facebook. Um, really? And he was just like, man, you know, he's a born-again believer, uh, sharing the gospel. Um Love to talk about his faith and, 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 and what the Lord has done for him. And he was like, you know, I owe that to you and your brother, Dewan. You know, he said, you guys shared Christ with me when we were, you know, we were just young boys in high school. You wow. know, so, you know, we just merely planted that seed in them. Somebody else down there in Florida did the watering. But I, I bless the name of the Lord that God gave the increase. Amen. What about um watering? What are you? They, you was the ticket. Like, wow. Yes, yes, yes. I, I've uh, uh, experience. Uh, you're just like wow. Someone could say, you know, like you had to, you know, you were right there. Yes, 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 yes. You're just right there. Uh, and and you know, I, I think the water aspect is almost like just being in the right place at the right time. That's true. You know? <laughs> yeah. yeah, you know, it's like just being at the right place at the right time, and the Lord just happens to to let your paths cross. Uh, and they've like, man, you know, um. I remember, you know, X amount of years ago, somebody was telling me about the Lord and, and just a lot of things got caught up in my life and I went through a, another direction and this, that, and the third. But man, like, I'm so glad our paths has, has crossed. And it's just, I just feel like now is the time for me just to connect with Christ and, and things of that nature. And you really didn't have to do anything. Yeah, yeah, was, you know, yeah. just, just the timing and just, you see God get the glory out of it. Yeah. Without, hey, look, man, uh, this is called Half Hour Power. Man, you nailed it. You answered everything I had. Um, you know what I mean? Man, I appreciate you. Keep evangelizing. Hey, look, maybe one day you can invite me out. Maybe I'll learn something. I'll drive up to wherever you at. I'll you somewhere far. You pass your parents. I know that. <laughs> yeah. you know, somewhere far. But I would love to not only do these interviews, but also go out and do the work and then come back and talk about it and share with the populace. You know what I mean? That would be awesome, man. That would be I awesome. Think I really know about evangelism. You know, they you talk about the four spiritual laws, you know, the, that little book. You ever see that little book? <laughs> the four spiritual laws. They, no, they sell, no. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I'll show you one day. They, they okay. like at any Christian bookstore. Yeah, they, mm-hmm. you know, and you shit. Like a lot of, like what they told me in my church, a lot of people do it when I'm telemarketers call you. Mm-hmm. And you're not interested, and you say, "Well, I have something I can share with you." You got a minute? They typically <laughs> hang up on you, but you know, <laughs> you know there's a good book too uh, on uh, on evangelism. It's just simply called uh, "What Does God Want?" Uh, oh, and, it's, cool. it's, and yeah, I mean, and it's, it's it's real general, it's basic, but it's written by uh, Dr. Michael Heiser, and I just think it's a, it's a good, simple book. Um, you know, and it just it just gives you, I think. What it gives you is is the biblical narratives. It gives you the complete overall narrative, that one contiguous story of the Bible, and what does God want? And, and, and you know, with that, it just arms you with so much in the Bible that you can apply it anywhere to any culture at any time, any place, any worldview. You know, maybe, it's a very maybe, yeah. Maybe I should get that book when we revisit this conversation and try to break it down in a conversation. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. That sounds good. Yeah, yeah. 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 When, we, when we 
hang up, screenshot me, or text me that, and we just um we just go from there. Okay, all right, we'll do. Sounds good. Well, brother, I love you, man. I appreciate you, love man. You too. Love you too, brother. man. Appreciate it's just you, great, man. You uh, I mean, I'm not surprised with you. You know what I mean? I remember when I was thinking about doing it. I, I, you know, I just was like, the Lord put you on my heart. I called you. You know, we were playing phone tech, but now we here. So um, yeah, definitely sure. got me that book. And let's um, I won't be a stranger. Let's continue to change the world, man. Sounds good, man. Sounds good. Much appreciation, bro. And keep chopping it up. I am, man. And um, tell your parents I asked about them, Deanna, everybody. All right, will do. All right, brother. Love you, man. Love you, too. This is your brother. Oh, pendant.